Do you believe God exists? No. You're an atheist? Uh, yes. Now what led you to atheism? I'm queer. Appreciate so much. That was a really great conversation. I appreciate it. What are you doing? I'm studying tarot right now. You're studying what? Tarot. Now what's that? Uh, tarot is um, a very uh, old um, uh, cardomancy um, trade. Uh, people read cards, came from the gypsies, and uh, they try to um, discern either the future or people's past, fut- you know, whatever. <laughs> it, is it working? Um, for me it is, because uh, what I was trying to do is um, I'm just trying to see, you know, what's deeper in my mind and the mind of others. I'm not really trying to read the future or anything. Do you think people know the future? I think people can predict it pretty well. Yeah, I think it's the difference between predicting. I mean, weather forecasters predict it. Yeah. They have a certain amount of knowledge and information, and they say, I think this will happen. But they, uh, many a parade has been rained upon because the weather forecasters got it yeah. wrong. And if people could really predict the future, I mean, even 10 minutes, 5 minutes, they go to Las Vegas and predict what's going to happen on that gambling table and make a exactly. billions of dollars. So it's pretty hard to know the future. Um, have you ever studied biblical prophecy? No, not really. Have you ever studied Nostradamus? No. Nostradamus was uh, into like the darker side, and he predicted the future, um, and he got it right 70% of the time. You know why? Because uh, he could read the signs? No, he read his Bible in secret, ripped off Bible prophecies, said they were his own. So anyone who's, <laughs> anyone who's ignorant of Bible prophecies thinks Nostradamus is, uh, is really good. Have you ever studied the scientific facts in the Bible? No. Yeah, the Bible has lots of scientific facts, like it says the world hangs upon nothing. It speaks of the free float in space, it speaks of the circle of the earth, the earth circular, it speaks of quarantining. Uh, two or three thousand years before man discovered if you've got a contagious disease you're supposed to quarantine. Um, lots of stuff like that. And then biblical prophecies. Do you know any of the signs of the end of the age? Nope. Well it says there'll be wars, rumors of wars, there'll be earthquakes and famines and diseases. It says Jerusalem will be in the hand of non-Jewish people until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. In other words, uh, the Jews will get Jerusalem back, and that happened in 1967, first time in 2,000 years the Jews got Jerusalem back. So if you want a prediction of what tomorrow is about, just read the Bible. Have you ever read the Bible? Yeah. Do you know what its message is? Nope. Well, the Old Testament, God promised to destroy death. The New Testament tells us how he did it. Do you think there's an afterlife? Yes. Now, why are you so adamant? You are very quick to say yes. Uh, it's just what I believe. Is it based on anything? Um, I would have to think about it a lot more. Is it based on, on hope? You just love life and would hate death to be the end? I think I'm a very optimistic person, so you could say that, yeah. Are you afraid of death? Uh, not particularly. I think everybody is. People who say not particularly, either proud and they don't want people to know they're vulnerable, or they haven't thought about it very deeply. But if you think about it, your life is so precious to you, and if you've got a contagious disease that led to death, You'd be saying, oh God, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I love life. I love the blue sky and love and laughter and music and friends and family and food and all these things that surround us. Do you believe God exists? No. Now, you're an atheist? Uh, yes, I am. Now, what led you to atheism? I'm queer. Yeah, well, that doesn't make you an atheist. Goodness I, me. What led me to it? That was your question. Why? Because I'm queer and queer people have uh, been persecuted. Uh, like a lot of other people. Um, when I was uh, growing up and I was in high school, um, reading about the Holocaust, because that's what you know our curriculum teaches us in, in grade school, um, I thought about how horrible you know some of these things were. And then I thought about the concept of hell, which is an afterlife concept, um, and something I choose not to believe in sometimes. Um, I just thought about you know how some entity so powerful you know supposed to love the people that they created and you know you see all of the tragedies and terrible crises that happen on earth throughout history and even you know the things that we're living through right now um, I could not fathom an entity letting all those things happen um, you brought up the the whole thing about the Holocaust I'm Jewish mm-hmm. I wrote a book called Hitler God in the Bible mm-hmm. and as I went into writing the book as I researched it in my subconscious, I was thinking, how could God ever create hell? 
After studying the Holocaust and seeing what Hitler did to the Jews and homosexuals and gypsies and blacks, horror beyond words, had me in tears, mm -hmm. I came out of that saying, how could God not create hell? There must be punishment for evil. If God is just and good and holy, there must be retribution. Or God is wicked and evil, because any judge who turns a blind eye to such wickedness and says, I don't care, is evil by nature. Okay, Josh, let me change the dynamic a little, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. We've addressed your intellect. I'd like to address your conscience. Are you okay with that? Yeah, of course. Do you think you're a good person? I think so. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> what do you call someone who tells lies? Uh, you call him a liar. That's so, being really uh, basic. <laughs> have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small, irrespective of its value? I plead the fifth on that one. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Uh, we'll plead the fifth on that one too. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Uh, I have no problem saying that I uh, have been lusty in my life. <laughs> the reason we die is because we've sinned against God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. In other words, sin is so serious to God, he's paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge has a criminal in front of him that's raped three girls and then slit their throats. The judge says you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. Or life imprisonment. He said you've earned punishment. And God says our sin is so serious, he's given us the death sentence. We're waiting around to die because we're on death row because God said the soul that sins, it shall die. The proof God is serious about sin will be our death. And then after death, the Bible says damnation if you die in your sins because God's going to judge you not from man's perspective, we all think we're good, but from his perspective, which is one of absolute moral perfection, what the Bible calls holiness. Go on. Sorry. I'm just... Now tell me. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you know? Oh, go for it. You tell me. Yeah. Well, the Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus came and paid the fine. That's what happened on the cross. Do you know what his last words were just before he died? There were three words. Please. He said, it is finished. Now, that's a weird thing to say when you're dying. Some people try and say something profound or philosophical or just, uh but he said, he said, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. We broke the law, he paid the fine. Josh, if you're in court and someone pays your fine, a judge can let you go even though you're guilty. He can say, Joshua, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid him. You're free to go. And he can do that, which is legal and right and just. And you and I are guilty before God. We've violated his law. We can plead the fifth, but all of us are guilty. And if you, if you hate someone, the Bible says you're a murderer in your heart. As far as God is concerned, that's how high his standard is. We're under his wrath, under the death sentence, heading for hell. But God paid the fine in Christ so that justice could be done and mercy could be extended. Jesus died on the cross. That means God can freely let you live forever, not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. When Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated death. I notice on your book there, you've got a skull. It's usually depicting death. Death is called the Grim Reaper. Well, Jesus took the sickle out of the hand of the Grim Reaper. Death lost its sting when Jesus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And now God offers you everlasting life as a free gift if you'll simply repent of all sin. That means lying, stealing, lust, homosexuality, adultery, fornication, whatever you know, the Bible says God is... Is homosexuality a sin? Is that where we're going with this? No, but I had to mention it to you to be faithful because I love you, I care about you, and I'm not going to lie to you because I don't want to offend you. The Bible uh -huh. makes it very clear in the book of Corinthians. Well, I mean, feel free to be honest here. I mean, if that's yeah. your belief that it's a sin, please. I mean, I think that that's really important to lay out on the table. Yeah. Homosexuals say I was born with these desires. I had no choice. Well, mm. I was born with a desire to commit adultery when I looked at the lady next door from a little kid. She was gorgeous. I'd love to get a bed with her, but it doesn't make it right. Do not be deceived, neither... Uh, thieves, liars, fornicators, adulterers, homosexuals mm -hmm. will inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse uh, 9 and 10. So anyway, back to what I was saying. If you'll repent of all sin, that which you know is offensive to God, God says you'll not only forgive you... straight people aren't offensive to God? They are, absolutely. Are they? They're under the death because sentence. If I've looked with lust, uh -huh. as far as God's concerned, I've committed adultery in my heart. Jesus <laughs> said that on the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. I'm a liar and a thief and a, a fornicator. I've committed all those sins. I'm as guilty as the rest. So homosexuality isn't being singled out as a particular sin. It's just in the list of yes, sins. Yes, it is, because you're talking about, you know, fornication, blah, blah, blah. See, we're not talking about the same thing. 
when you talk about homosexuality, you're always talking about that compared to something else that isn't an actual relationship. Um, you know, simple fornication is not a relationship. Adultery is not a relationship. These, these are all things that stand alone on their own as sins, right? You're not comparing a queer relationship to a straight relationship the right way. All of us have sinned. We've all, we all have God's wrath abiding upon us. We're under his death sentence, but God offers everlasting life to the whole of humanity. Adulterers, fornicators, to homosexuals, liars, thieves. Have lived that long yet? Yes. Now, let me finish. Ooh. I'm trying to just... Give you Who's lived that long yet? This, this Meth far. Methuselah has lived for 969. I'm I'm really excited to look that up. I'm gonna I'm gonna research that. Thank you for teaching me that. If you'll simply repent of all sin and trust in Jesus for your salvation, God promises to more than commute your death sentence. You know what the difference between a commutation and a pardon is? Yes. Yeah. Well, God doesn't just commute your sins. He pardons them completely, as though you never sinned. He clothes you in righteousness, so when you stand before him on judgment day, mm -hmm. he can legally let you live forever because Jesus died on the cross. Living forever would be such a burden, though. Well, not in this state. This is a fallen state with futility and pain and suffering and loneliness and fear. God says he's going to take all that off. No more tears, pain, suffering, and death. God's kingdom's coming to this earth, and God's will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Things might not get better. So if they don't get better, you don't want these people to live forever, you know? Um, if our generation is far from perfect, if they're not just, you know, far from perfect, if they are, have a negative net effect on moving us forward, you don't want them to live forever. You want them to die. <laughs> Hitler had a similar philosophy. He wanted a pure I race. never, ever compare the need for people to, bad people to die off to Hitler, so I think that that is a really, and first of all, Hitler was a, a right-wing fascist. Was what Hitler did morally wrong? I'm, is that a question? I, I, that has to be rhetorical. Please, go on. <laughs> it's not. Go on. <laughs> Whatever. Is, is what Hitler did morally wrong? Okay, I heard, I heard what you said the first time, but I, I'm not going to answer that question because it is not a question that needs to be asked. Well, I'll tell you why it needs to be asked of an atheist, because an atheist can't say it was morally wrong, because he's got nothing to base right or wrong on. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, there is no reason to say or believe that God is needed in order to say whether or not Hitler was immoral or moral. I think that is the, the silliest, silliest declaration you could make. I think that Christianity is, is a great tool for some people. But it is not a necessity in the material world that we live in. Totally agree with you. Okay. So what I'm saying is that the reason we know it's wrong, what Hitler did was wrong, is because we have a conscience. Conscience is God-given, but society-shaped. Conscience means with knowledge. This has been a very stimulating conversation. I've really enjoyed it. Yes, it has. And I want to thank you so much um, for listening to me and being so reasonable. And I want you to realize that that I don't condemn you as a homosexual, I love you as a homosexual, <laughs> I care about you. So are you going to think about what we talked about today? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to look up Methuselah. I think that is going to be a fun little project. And um, but I mean the gospel I shared with you, that God offers everlasting life as a free gift to oh, all those. No, who... absolutely not, because I don't believe in him. And um, I think that if we're all going to hell together and someone else that sees your videos uh, finds me down there, which, I mean, you probably won't even recognize me, but believe this. If there is a God, and if there is hell, and if it is as punishing and terrible and evil as a lot of people say it is, we will be fighting back. There is no doubt about it. Because in this lifetime, on this earth, we are already fighting evil. And if we fight evil here, well, God, we're going to fight evil down there too. So we'll see you there. As I said, I love you, and the thought of you ending up in hell breaks my heart. It really does. I don't have tears in my eyes for you, but I've got tears in my voice. It breaks my heart, the thought that if death seized upon you tonight, you'd end up in hell. So I'll be praying for you and thinking about you and, and hope you'll give serious thought to your eternal salvation. So thanks for talking to me, Josh. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was a really great conversation. I appreciate it. Charles Spurgeon said, when preaching in private talk are not available, you need to have a tract ready. Get good striking tracts or none at all. And that's what we've striven to produce, tracks that get read. Let me show you some of our eye-catching gospel tracks. 
This is the curved illusion tract, which looks longer, the red or the blue, the blue or the red. They're exactly the same size. It has the gospel on the back. Something to think about. Very cute little format presenting the gospel. You can always make a joke about, here's a picture of me when I was younger. Smart card. Place your thumb firmly on the box for 15 seconds. If you're a good person, it will turn a bright green. Note it must be for exactly 15 seconds. Actually, nothing happens and explains, oh, nobody's good on the back. A gift for you, you can place uh, in here and here a $1 bill, $2 bill, $5 bill, and just give it as a gift to a non-Christian with the gospel. Here's a uh, ticket to heaven. It says if you don't need a ticket to heaven, tear this up if you can. This is unterrible paper. Here's our trillion dollar bill, our Einstein bill, a very popular million dollar bill, our Ten Commandment coin. It has the Ten Commandments on one side and the gospel on the back. How do one of the world's funniest one-liners at first don't succeed, don't try skydiving. It's so easy to give out. Science confirms the Bible, a good person track, very, very popular. Our uh, wallet tracked. To give this out, all you do is toss it down, people pick it up. How good is your brain? How many holes are in this t-shirt? Well, looks like two, there's actually eight. Track for children, a movie gift card points people directly to our website, Fully Free Films. You give them a tract and say, you might like to read this when you get around to it. Here's a round to it. Pro-life tract. Incredible pictures. Here's a tract to give out when you're walking your dog. Faith is for weak people. Responding to the top 10 objections to the gospel. Are you a good person? Gospel clearly in a little booklet. And giant money tract. I've shown you about half the tracks in the sample pack. I would suggest that you get this for yourself so you can feel the quality and read the message. It's available at livingwaters.com. Thank you for your concern for the lost.